The next periodic trend I'd like to talk about is ionization energy. So what is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the energy needed to take away an electron from an atom in the gas phase. It could also be an ion, but for the most part, just think of ionization energy as the energy required to remove an electron. So if we look at different elements, you know, can we remove an electron from them easily or is it going to be more difficult? We'll see that this ionization energy follows a clear trend that is somewhat related inversely to the atomic size of atoms. So what are some of the trends of ionization energy? An electron is easier to remove if it's further away from the nucleus. So we notice that ionization energy decreases as we go down. Why does it decrease as we go down? As we go down, remember in this corner, the elements are getting bigger. Up in this corner, the elements are much smaller. So as we go down a group, it's easier to remove an electron when the valence shell is further away from the nucleus, right? And as we go down, we see that these numbers correlate to energy levels, or you can say shells of electrons. So as we go down the shells further away, it's easier to remove that electron. So if we look, can we organize this from increasing ionization energy? So which one has the least ionization energy? And a lot of times for ionization energy, they write IE. So ionization, which one has the least ionization energy? and which one would have the most or the largest ionization energy. So I want you to think of it in terms of metals and nonmetals. We know that metals lose electrons and nonmetals like to gain electrons. If ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron, who do you think is going to have the lowest ionization energy? Metals. Why? They want to lose electrons. It is going to be much harder to take an electron from a non-metal. So typically, who has least ionization energy? Metals. Who has greater ionization energy? Nonmetals. When you think of it in terms like that, it helps a lot. And you can also think of it as it's easier to remove an electron that's further away. So remember, these are my bigger atoms. And because those are my bigger atoms, the valence shell is further away, it's easier to remove. In this upper right-hand corner, they're my smaller atoms. They're also my non-metals. They don't like to lose electrons. They're small and tight. They're good at stealing the electrons. So when I think of it in terms of that way, I see that ionization energy, again, it decreases as I go down. It's easier to take an electron and it increases as I go from left to right. So of all the elements, which one's furthest to the, you know, furthest away from this upper right-hand corner or the most uh, lowest on the left-hand side? We see that calcium is the furthest away from helium. Who would be next? Aluminum. 
and then nitrogen. And the one that's really hard to remove an electron from is fluorine. Why is fluorine so hard to remove an electron from? Well, it's really small. It's only got two shells and it has a pretty high atomic number for only having those two energy shells. Another way of thinking of it is it's a non-metal, likes to gain electrons, not lose. And it's a halogen that's extremely reactive. It's one away from neon. It's gonna steal an electron before it loses one. So I hope that helps you understand the basic trend of ionization energy. Again, ionization energy decreases as we go down a period and increases as we go from left to right. If you guys have any questions or a comment, just let me know. And thanks for tuning in.